So the next talk by Zaktu will be on, data -led on the data led registry, um, bringing benefits of centra centrality to data led. And uh, Isaac is a software developer. He joined the Center of Open Neuroscience with Yarek at Bathmouth College. Uh, I did the USB oh, is there a USB-C USB um, converter adapter? So he joined uh, the Open, Open Neuroscience, Center of Open Neuroscience in 2022. And his role at uh, Con Isaac focuses on data-led registry, aiming to bring the benefits of centrality to the data-led community. So the floor is yours. Thanks. Sorry for the delay. Um, I will talk about um, data lab registry. Uh, Yarek actually direct this project, and he will assist me in answering some of the questions later on, especially the ones regarding future developments. Um, before we start, I want to thank uh, Kyle, John, and Stefan for their contributions to this project. Uh, the funding for this project comes from data lab, Dandy, and Rebulim. Uh, we have a few goals for this project. Uh, to discover uh, data-led data sets and keep repo touched by data-led runs on the internet, no case we use this of these data sets. Um, make up, um, make up today data set um, metadata uh, available and also enable search of data set through their metadata. Um, we accomplished these goals largely through automation. Data led uh, automates, I mean, uh, data led registry automates discovery of data sets, extraction of metadata from data sets, and also update of data sets state and metadata. And given the vastness of the internet, even a robot would have difficulty of picking out um, data, uh, data sets from it. So for the discovery of data set, we rely on an existing project, uh, data Lab usage dashboard. Uh, it's developed by and maintained um, by our team member, John Water. Um, it uses uh, GitHub Action CI to periodically search for data led uh, related repos on GitHub, OSS, and GIN. It compiles uh, a JSON file with all the discover uh, data sets. Currently, the registry have um, up-to-date information on over 12,000 data sets. This data set consists of all those uh, on uh, dataset uh, data or and all those discovered by the usage dashboard I just mentioned, except the ones residing on OSF, which are to be added soon. Uh, various extractors are employed to extract metadata from data sets. Some of uh, them are generic, while others are domain specific like uh, the one uh, for this data set in neural imaging and uh, Dandy for um, data sets in the Dandy archive. Um, 
So this is the current web UI for dataset registry. Uh, it's a collection of dataset displayed in tabular form. Each dataset is identified by its URL. The dataset column provides uh, the GUID of the dataset if it's hap it happened to be a data net data set. Our last column is the data, uh, the metadata of a data set extracted by different extractors. Other columns provide some basic information. Um, in this UI, you can access the search functionality in data set registry and the documentation of the uh, search query. Um, each simple string, uh, I mean, a search, uh, a search of a simple string is a substring search across all the searchable fields. Particularly, um, in this particular example, uh, shows the mandatory substring search of Haxby, uh, who, who happened to be the original mentor of Yarek and Michael across all the searchable fields. A substring search can be restricted to a particular field, uh, and logical operators are available for constructing a, a more complex search queries. Uh, UID in this particular example is the, U, uh, the ID of the Rapolim container dataset. This query demonstrates finding all the datasets uh, that reference the container dataset. A close approximation of finding all the data set that uses the container data set as a sub data set. Uh, of course, this particular um, uh, behavior is to be improved since it's just a, an approximation. A search can be restricted to um, metadata by a specific set of extractors. Um, the query in this example locates the data set conforming to the BID version 1.6 standard. Uh, Besides the UI data set, uh, registry also provide an API. Um, uh, the schema for uh, open API, the open API schema for the, uh, for the API is available for download and you can, with it, you can use uh, open API generator to generate uh, a client to interact with the registry. Additionally, interacting with um, interactive uh, documentation of uh, the API is available through Swagger and two other interfaces. So, uh, supported operations um, in this uh, this this uh, API um, uh, allows uh, registering of the new data sets through. Um, Although the, I mean, it allows registering of new data set. Although this uh, particular feature is currently disabled in our public facing instance, um, querying of uh, the data uh, the data set based on restrictions and fetching data set and metadata by internal IDs. Uh, in particular, um, data set query, uh, the data set query endpoint supports the same search uh, functionality as the web UI, but allow for additional uh, restriction on uh, in a search, and provide an option for including metadata in uh, the search result. Um, a, full fi uh, a fully featured uh, data lab registry instance is made up of uh, a few service components. A web service that serves the UI, the web UI I just pointed out, and also the API endpoints you have just seen. Um, and also a database service that store all the metadata and salary related uh, service co uh, services that implements the automation that I mentioned earlier. In particular, the, work, the worker is responsible for doing all the cloning and the metadata extraction. Um, the scheduler is responsible for doing, uh, uh, for in initiating periodic tasks to be executed by workers. 
Um, these periodic class include the syncing of data led uh, registry with the data led usage uh, dashboard for new data sets and updates of uh, uh, the updating of the registered data set and also their uh, metadata. Um, uh, the registry can also be launched as a with only instance that consists of only the uh, web and DB services. Such an instance uh, protects the fully featured main instance from abuse. Multiple read only instances can also speed the workload. Uh, read only instance is set up of um, is 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 set up to be in sync with the the fully uh, featured instance always. Uh, in fact, uh, the the instance that you interact with at registry dot is a read only instance. Now, um, I, data led registry is far from complete, at least that's what I hope. Currently, um, we are trying to integrate data led registry with a data led catalog to provide a landing page for individual data sets. We will improve search uh, by allowing uh, search in specific JSON fields in metadata. We will also export metadata to a graph database to allow search based, based on knowledge graph. We will add uh, data set level metadata from extractor that are not yet included. We'll also do file level metadata extraction. In pursuit of all these, uh, we anticipate scal uh, scal scalability to be the main challenge and deciding on the right database technology to use seems to be the crucial step in overcoming this uh, challenge. And if you guys have any recommendation in uh, what data uh, graph database to use, uh, please let us know. Um, if you have any collection of data set want to run some period periodic tasks on, or if you want to uh, have your own instance of uh, data lab registry on some private data sets, um, have interest in uh, doing any interesting uh, metadata extraction, or have a uh, some specific search use cases to adjust, please let us know. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Isaac. Um, Actually, data led registry or the data led data set which you can install, data led install slash slash slash, you gotta try that. It's 500 terabytes and that's where it's based on and it's amazing that you can directly access most of the data. So are there any questions for Isaac? Well, you may have addressed part of my question which is the 500 terabytes. I was just wondering how many, what does it all sum up to? The total size of all the of all the data sets you're aware of. Um, so all those include. So what you just mentioned is the data set dot data let dot all, right? We also have the one that we found on GitHub, and also ones in uh, oh, well, Gene. I if, if I remember correctly, it's about. It definitely about. 500 gigabyte, or a little bit beyond. Terabytes? I mean, with just the cloning. Oh, no, I, I was talking about the annexed data, not the size of the Git repositories, although that's very interesting. Um, but I meant the annexed data that these data sets are pointing to. Well, it's, it's more than what you have in data less dot, uh, data set. I mean, data set dot data let dot all, but I don't know the exact count. At this point, we should sum up on that column. Yeah, so we have right. Column and the That's what I would like. Yes. So yes. there's some limitation on our uh, UI currently, like the one you see, the web UI. So one of the actually I forgot to mention is that we want to integrate uh, what we build for the API to actually build another UI on top of that. So uh, right now is far from complete, just as I mentioned. So there are we we didn't. There are many other information we can include, but it's finding it difficult to just include it in one, mm -hmm. one, you know, one single page app. So that's one of the things that we need to 
we need to change. Uh, do, um, thank you for, for the talk. I find this a, a great project to make it more centralized and get the overview, and also to scrape uh, data from, from GitHub and uh, Jin. Um, but just having the metadata uh, does not uh, give us information if the annexed data is actually uh, available, right? Uh, so I, I wonder if, uh, and if it still exists anywhere. So I, I wonder um, uh, if there is a way uh, to, uh, uh, check um, how many of these data sets are actually still uh, valid and usable because the annexed content is somewhere there. Uh, I think that we can, uh, so one of the thing that we are going to adjust is to do uh, file level extraction, right? So when we do that, when we get to that particular point, then we, uh, we can build something that also catalog if all those remote data are in existence. So when we run the, so we, uh, we will use something like a da data lab fields to actually, we are planning to use that to actually run some extraction on individual files. And then since we will be accessing those files and we will know if those files are still in existence. So, and the other thing is that, um, so uh, at least f that is concerning the remote data, right? But then at least each time, since we are constantly updating, checking if there's new commit, you know that you, uh, if you go to that page, you see that the last time we updated that particular data set, and you know that at least at that point, someone have recently updated the particular data set, right? Even though it's not at exact timing. But we know that last time when we run that particular update, someone has just pushed an update to that. And by the way, that actually uh, there should be one, we are planning to add one column uh, that indicate the latest commit. Actually, it's just our oversight we currently Need there say columns say the last change date is actually the last change date by our our server that we detected a change instead of the last commit by the by the user. So we should we will include something like that on the um, on the UI as well. All right. Let's uh, thank Isaac for for his talk.